What's going on internet? IG here again today with part two of the best KDE distributions. Okay, so first up, I wanna say thank you for all of your feedback on the last video. And as some of you may or may or not know, your feedback has kind of helped with one distribution sneaking into the system, which, yeah, if you follow me on Google+, Plus, you kind of already know which that one is. But with all of that stuff aside, thank you for all of your comments on the last video. And of course, feel free to keep them coming in this one as well. And one other thing I need to address, and that is an important news item which has kind of jumped into this mix since the last video, and that is the recent release of KDE 4.11. And KDE uh, Plasma Desktop and all of the stuff that kind of rolls into that came out very recently. And so this will start trickling down into distributions depending on what distribution you are running or want to run. So for the release based ones, it'll be on the next release that they will have KDE 4.11. And for the rolling ones, it'll probably trickle down sooner or later, depending on how stable your distribution is trying to be. But with all that said, let's get on with the series. So the fourth distribution on this list is Corora 19. Now Corora is a Fedora based distribution and although it sort of does have two desktops, the GNOME and the KDE, I went with the KDE because I've had a very good experience with this distribution in the past and it does kind of specialize in, in having a KDE desktop on the Fedora side of things. So despite KDE's complexity, Corora has a very minimalist workflow, which I think is a good thing. It also has an excellent app selection as it's got apps for all the different tasks you could possibly want or need. And it's got a few helpful additions to those apps to kind of bring them uh, to yeah another level of user friendliness. They bring really the best open source applications into their distribution and they cover a lot of the tasks that an everyday user is going to face. And for that, I think they deserve some thumbs up. They also have a really great welcome screen that uh, gives new users links to like a beginner's guide and the forums and other help that they might need along the way. And they also have some good tools for driver management and stuff like that. Like I mentioned, the app selection is very diverse. And one thing that I really did appreciate about Corora and a few other KDE distributions is that they put in the menus the actual item description of what the apps do as opposed to their funky open source names because we all know some of the apps on, on in open source distributions can be pretty confusing at times. So they've given each menu item a main title based on what the app does, not based on what the app is actually called in the open source world, just to make it easier for new users to find their way around the menu. So thumbs up for good app discovery and I think we'll leave it at that. It also has a really solid boot time and good performance overall. It was consuming about 0.48 gigs of RAM on idle, which isn't too shabby really compared to some of the other distributions that we've seen. Corora also does throw in some helpful little bits and pieces along the way to kind of help new users get their toes wet, such as the yum extender, which kind of helps uh, the yum package management systems make a bit more sense. A personal information management tool, which is helpful for bringing in all of your you know, things like business cards and calendars from other applications, which is pretty awesome. And also they've got some Firefox extensions, which are pretty rad as well. So overall, it's a very solid desktop operating system, and that's why it's on this list. And now we move on to the dark horse of the group, and that is Chakra. Now, you can always correct me if I'm pronouncing this wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Chakra. Chakra Linux is originally got an Arch heritage to it, so it does have quite a few uh, tokens from the Arch Linux world, even though it is not based on Arch nowadays. It is its own fully independent beast, and for that, I think they deserve some major props. And the other thing that really got it onto this list was the fact that it specializes solely in KDE. So the distribution as a default will only use the KDE tools and KDE libraries, helping it to be very nimble and very, uh, what's the word, cohesive as far as all of the apps work together very well. And visually it looks very consistent. Actually, I've got to say the design of this operating system overall is pretty nice. And the apps that they do give you, like I mentioned, are all KDE based. So this could be a good thing or a bad thing because some of the apps in the KDE universe aren't quite up to par with their open source flagship counterparts, such as LibreOffice and GIMP and etc. But I've got to say the KDE apps bring a lot of punch. The Caligra Suite, Critter Painting, a lot of graphics tools and multimedia tools are all here in Chakra by default. Very comprehensive suite of cohesive and consistent applications applications all developed and built with the KDE desktop in mind. So this means that it's going to be very nimble and indeed it was. It was very, very speedy compared to some of the other distributions which have to load up external libraries into KDE when you start an application such as Firefox or GIMP. And Chakra also do a great job in combating one of the biggest complaints that new users or even intermediate users have about 
any distribution that is kind of based on Arch or at one point was based on the philosophy of Arch. Thankfully the keep it simple stupid principle is here as well and the Pac-Man package manager which a lot of uh, Linux users love has got a graphical front end to it and it's very similar to Synaptic on the Debian based distribution side of things. Because it does have a bit of an Arch heritage, it also is a rolling release, which means that every now and again they'll put out a snapshot on their website that you can download and install, and then from there it'll just gradually keep itself up to date, which is pretty cool. It's definitely the silkiest performer out of all of them, even though it was consuming about 0.54 gig of RAM on idle. And one of the other things that I really did like about this distribution was its welcome screen manager thing. If you recall a long, long time ago, I did a review of a distribution called Pardis Linux, and it's kind of dropped off the radar uh, in some ways since then. But one of the things that I really liked about Pardis was the fact that it had this welcome manager that kind of came up, introduced you to the distribution, and helped you to customize your desktop the first time around so that you wouldn't have to dig through all the settings yourself and do it later. So big thumbs up from that distribution and I really liked it for that fact. Well Chakra has taken that tool, kind of forked it and dumped it into their own desktop to create a very nice welcoming experience. It's a really welcome addition and I'm glad that they've included this which again gives it a few points in my book. But overall the fact that Chakra is solely a KDE built distribution I think gives it a place on this list and you should definitely give it a go. It's definitely not for the absolute noob as there are a few tricks that you're going to have to learn about the way the whole Arch side of the Linux world works. But with the graphical tools that they've included and some of the other perks that they've thrown in to make it a bit more user friendly, it's definitely worth a shot. And for that mere KDE experience and the silky smoothness of it all, you definitely should give it a go. Finally, we have Netrunner. Netrunner, of course, a distribution based off Ubuntu, one of my personal favorites. So what got Netrunner onto this list? Well, again, specialized KDE distribution, it's optimized for high resolution screens, which is pretty good. So text and items are a little bit bigger than what they usually are in KDE, which is good because KDE can sometimes get a bit small and hard to read. It also has some really nice web account integration, which I really like. KDE has some awesome backend tools to kind of communicate with outside sources of your personal information like Google or Facebook or Twitter. But unfortunately, a lot of distributions don't really capitalize on this. And so it really stays in the background. And unless somebody happens to stumble across it in the system settings, they're never really gonna know it exists. And so Netrunner brings this little online account tool on the actual desktop so that new users can click on it, set up their Google account and their Facebook account, and bam, they've got their desktop synced and communicating with those accounts. It is a bit of a resource hog, consuming 0.65 gig of RAM on idle, which is pretty huge compared to the other distributions that we've mentioned thus far in this series. And it does have a kind of Windows-esque approach to the way it, it, it themes and styles KDE. Making it easy for new users seems to be their tack here as they've included the best open source applications that, yeah, well, that the open source world has to offer, regardless of what libraries they use or how well they're going to fit into the distribution. So for new users, this is definitely a good thing, but again, we're gonna see that resource hog thing popping up quite a bit. Wine is also pre-installed so you can get your Windows apps working more or less. And one of the other things that I really like is they use the Muon package management uh, suite. So this includes the Muon package manager itself, very similar to Synaptic. And then they also have Muon Discover, which is kind of like a very fancy app center, which gives you a good idea of what each application is, what it does, screenshots, ratings, reviews, and all of that fun stuff. It's gotta be one of the better design software centers out there. For new users, this is a must. They include a good selection of web apps as well in the menu, which is pretty helpful, as well as some really nice third-party tools such as Flash, Java, Skype, Codex, Steam installation links, what more could you want? Out of all the KDE distributions that I've dealt with thus far, it's definitely the easiest to use and not no surprises there really because it is targeted towards newer users and people that just want a distribution that works. But overall, it's a very nice distribution with some good theming and some very tight integration with online accounts and a wonderful selection of open source apps. So in conclusion to the video today, we've seen a lot of great KDE distributions. The last six that I've mentioned in this series are definitely my choices as to some of the best KDE distributions that are out there. And it's very hard to name one as a particular winner because of course it really depends on, on your personal preferences and the way you work. But definitely the highlights in my book were Solid K, Netrunner, and Corora. Those would be my go-to distributions for KDE. But of course, yours are going to vary. So thank you all again for your feedback and responses. And also I will say that a few big distributions need to have some shout outs as far as their KDE distributions go, because they do actually package a very nice KDE desktop. 
primarily amongst those would be OpenSUSE. They do an amazing KDE desktop. Why didn't I mention them? Because they're a big distribution player. They package a lot of desktops and they've been a great KDE distribution for a long time now. Also, Magia. They, they have been doing an amazing job with a fork of Mandriva and it really works incredibly well. I ran it for quite some time on my old desktop and I can definitely vouch for the fact that it is a solid KDE choice. And finally, Kubuntu. Very vanilla and very minimalist, but again, it provides a good base for expansion. So there you have it, folks. Any of these distributions that you'd like to see reviewed more in depth, then definitely let me know in the comments below or on Facebook or Twitter or Google+. And as always, you will see me next week with another Linux distro review, app review, or maybe some Android stuff. So thank you all for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and all of that fun stuff, and I shall catch you later. And feel free to let me know if I should be doing this series more often with other desktop environments. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.